Would you stand and let's continue singing together? to the Christmas Eve service, one of our favorite nights in the year. Would you turn to the screen and help me do the call to worship? Surely God is our salvation. We will trust and not be afraid. This has been a long year for some people. Many good things have happened and for some not so good. But tonight, all of that is far away. And you are home. One of the reasons we love this night is because we get to see so many of you that have been far away, and you're here for the weekend, and we just can't wait to meet you. Thank you for making this a part of your night. Something in you tonight says we should be in church, doesn't it? So thank you for making this a part of your night. Let's pray and ask God to settle upon this place in the next few minutes as we gather to celebrate the arrival of Christ 
the most awesome person in the history of the world. Father, thank you for the privilege of getting together in the body of Christ on the eve before your birth. For all that you've done in people's lives around this room, what you've done in my life, and for the way that you have steadied us in these past couple of years, we stop and give you praise. It is good to gather in the name of Christ. Bless this gathering, we pray. Settle upon it. May everyone know before we leave that it has been blessed with your presence. In Jesus' name, God's people said, amen. You can be seated. In the beginning, there was nothing, nothing to hear, nothing to feel, nothing to see, only emptiness and darkness. But God was there and God had a wonderful plan. I'll take this emptiness, God said, and I'll fill it up. Out of the darkness, I'm gonna make light. And out of the nothing, I'm gonna make everything like a mother bird flutters her wings over her eggs to help her babies hatch, God hovered over the deep silent darkness. He was making life happen. God spoke, that's all. And whatever he said, it happened. This is my Father's word and to my All nature sings and round me rings the music of the God said, hello, light, and light shone in the darkness. You're good, God said, and it was. Hello, sea, hello, sky. A great space opened up wide and deep and high. You're good, God said, and they were. God created the land, the trees, the grass, the flowers, and everything everywhere burst into life. He created the stars, the sun, the moon, and all the animals of the earth and sea. You're all good, God said, and they were. This is my all that he had made, and he loved it. But God saved the best for last. From the beginning, God had a shining dream in his heart. He would make people to share his forever happiness. They would be his children, and the world would be their perfect home. So God breathed life into Adam and Eve. When they opened their eyes, the first thing they saw was God's face. And when God saw them, he was like a new dad. You look like me, he said. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever made. And God loved them with all of his heart. This is my Father's word.
lived happily together in their beautiful new home. And everything was perfect, uh, at least for a while, until the day that everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. Satan had wanted to be like God. He grew proud and evil and full of hate, and God had to send him out of heaven. Satan was angry and was looking for a way to stop God's plan. So he disguised himself as a snake and waited in the garden. Now God had given Adam and Eve only one rule, don't eat the fruit on that tree. God told them, because if you do, you'll think you know everything. You'll stop trusting me. And then death and sadness and tears will come. As soon as evil saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? The serpent whispered. If he does, why won't he let you eat the nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into her ears and sunk down deep into her heart like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly she didn't know anymore. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You don't need God. One small taste, that's all. You'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit and ate some. And Adam ate some too. And a terrible lie came into the world. It would never leave. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children, God doesn't love me. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem, but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until. But who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. He'll scrub the Levite priests clean, refining them like gold and silver, burning them away at the dross until they're fit for God, fit to present offerings of righteousness.
speak loud and clear. Don't be timid. Tell the cities of Judah, look, your God, look at him. God the Master comes in power, ready to go into action. He's going to pay back his enemies and reward those who have loved him. Like a shepherd, he will care for his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms. born for us, the gift of a son for us. He'll take over running the world. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Would you stand and let's rejoice together? Brothers and sisters, this isn't a story that we just remember with our minds. This is a story that we are invited to participate in with our entire lives. We've just heard the story of creation and the fall, and in a moment, the kids are going to help us reenact the incarnation story, the story of Christ coming to earth. So this is how it goes. We'll hear a reading from Luke, and we'll respond with a carol. And if you are in costume, or if you just feel like jumping up onto the platform, there's going to be a cue on the screen for your character, and that's the time when you come forward. And parents, friends, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, this is a great time to help those in costume know when they're supposed to go up. And if you need to go up with them, that is totally fine. You can sit up here. We are in no hurry. But as the story is built in front of us, my prayer for all of us is that it's also built in our lives. Let's hear the word of the Lord together. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken, a census of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and who was expecting a child.
while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to people he favors. Angels we have heard. Heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Would you stand and let's sing together? Jesus Christ is 
in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod. Some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. After talking to Herod, the wise men went on their way. The star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened the treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Wise men, leave your contemplations. Brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations You have seen his shining star Come and worship, come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal For those living in deep darkness, a light has come. And the light has promised to be with us. The light has promised to be in us. Jesus, the light of the world. And we are invited to participate, to let the light of Christ shine through us and shine in us. And so in a moment, you're gonna take your candle and as the light's offered to you, you'll turn and then offer it to those in your pew. And to keep everyone safe and to avoid getting wax all over the sanctuary, the way this works best is to hold your candle straight up when it's unlit and allow the person, or once it's lit, and allow the unlit candle to dip from that. And I know it's so tempting as that wax drips down to want to pick at that, but that makes for hours of cleanup for our facilities team. And so let's give them an early Christmas present and not pick at that wax together. Would you stand and let's share the light of Christ?
around the room yet? You may do that now. It's beautiful, isn't it? Would you pray with me? Christ, we are so thankful that you came as light into a world of darkness. To those stumbling in the darkness, a light has shined. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Tonight, with hearts full of gratitude for the way you came among us, grew up with us, changed our lives, and have begun already to save the world, we give you thanks and thanks. In a moment, as we leave this sanctuary, we will go out now as the body of Christ, not one, but many as one. And may our voice and may our life align with yours. When they see us, may they see you. May they believe in you, for you have sent us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's blow them out. Well, church, the Bible says you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before all people so that they'll see your good works and glorify God on the day he visits us. Merry Christmas to every one of you. Stay as long as you like. Bless one another before you leave. You're dismissed.